Okay, today I want to talk about color schemes and how you can create them. Now, this isn't a graphic design course with weeks and weeks worth of content. This is me trying to boil down into about 10 minutes how you would create a color scheme if you've never done this before, if you're just looking for a way to get started creating color schemes, because they can be quite challenging. So I'm using a website here called uh, Pixum.Photos, Lorem Pixum. Basically, it's a, a website that will generate beautiful images that you can use as background images or content for your website while you're creating the, con the concept of your site and putting together the site without any of the real content. Now, why I chose this was just because they have a lot of really nice pictures. So I, I took a photo, I just randomly chose this photograph to use as part of my website. When you're building a color scheme, you want to find images, you want to get content from the website owner that really reflects what the website is going to be. What is the feel? What is the purpose behind the website? So I've put together, I used this image and I built this basic simple website. I've got a header area with an H1 in it, some links, uh, a little hover effect, a couple of columns of content, and a footer. That's it. That's all there is. Uh, and you can see everything here is white or black or the default blue that you get for anchor tags. And that's it. So what I want to do is I want to take this image and I want to build a color scheme from this image. Now there's lots of little plugins and tools that you can use to extract colors. You can use Photoshop if you've got that. Um, I have a tool here called Color Picker. Uh, it's an extension for Chrome and the Color Pick eyedropper. You just click on it once you've got the extension installed and then you can move around and you choose pixels. So what I did was I picked a couple of pixels that were sort of representative of the image. So I took something in the orange range here and then I grabbed one of the lighter red colors from out of the strawberries. And those were going to be my two main colors that I want to use throughout the rest of the site. So when you click on one of these, it's going to give you a hex code. And if you click on it again, you can see here's the HSL. Now I love working with the HSL. Uh, it makes it very clear what the hue is and then it makes it easy to edit the other parts. With the two colors that I pick, I'm going to choose two different hues. That's the first number here. And then these percentages, that's the saturation and lightness, I'm just going to play with the lightness. So it becomes editing that one value, that lightness value, I'm tweaking that slightly with the same hue, with the same saturation. So I know I'm not going to end up with colors that really don't belong together. It makes it quite simple. So jumping over to our HTML content. Here's the page. Like I said, there's a wrapper div with a header. There's an H1 tag inside of that. I've got a nav element with a bunch of anchor tags. I've got the main element that has two divs with the class column and H2, three paragraphs, H2, two paragraphs, footer with a paragraph inside of it. Very basic representative content, kind of any generic website could have that kind of content. Now, in my CSS, like I said, I extracted two colors. One that had the hue 34, so it's kind of a orange color. One that's got 346, which is much closer to zero. It's uh, more of a, a red, a little bit leaning towards the purple color, but that's coming out of the raspberry. This was coming out of the background. They've all got the same saturation level, and I've just taken the value 62 and then I subtracted 25 I added 25 and then I went down to this one and I did the same sort of thing here so I've got three variants of this red and I've got three variants of the orange then because that's not going to be enough for my website I also went to grays now when you're building color schemes you don't want to have pure black or pure white unless it's very intentional for a small place where you really want to highlight something. But most of the time, you want off-white, which means grays. And just the same as you would for the font weights, using the numbers 100, 300, 500, 700, 900, those are your different font weights. We do the same thing with the grays. So any degree can be used. Just, you know, I throw in any number here. The saturation set to zero means it's going to be gray. And then I just tweak the percentage for the lightness. So 10%, that's going to be very dark gray. 
That's a medium gray, and this is going to be not white, but very, very bright. So these are the colors that I'm going to work with, and I'm going to build my site out of those colors. And I'm going to be able to create, that's my whole color scheme, I'm going to be able to create a page that reflects the same sort of sense of style and theme that we've got in that header image. All right, so back to the page. First thing I want to do is I'm going to fill in a color for the HTML, the background behind absolutely everything. So I'm going to take here my starter color. We're going to go with that. And we're going to set this as the background on the HTML element. We'll just start inside of here. So background color. Start with that. Okay, there we have it. So this may be a little bit dark in here, but it's going to make a nice background in behind this. And it because it's a color that came out of this image, it feels like it belongs in here. Now we can jump down into the wrapper content here, and I'm going to want something a little bit lighter for that. I'm going to want to bring it forward. So inside the wrapper, we're going to take the lighter version of that. So we can take this, go down into the wrapper, the background color. I copied and pasted the wrong one here. So we're going to go back up here and get the correct one. Uh, it was the 34, not the 346 that I wanted. So I'm grabbing this color right here. And this is going to be my wrapper. We want something that's lighter than the background in the body. There we go. So 34, 34. So it's the orange, but this is the lighter version of the orange. There we go. That's looking better. So we've got two versions of the same hue. So they're working well together, both coming out of the hue that we got from this image. And one other thing that I'm going to do here, I'm just going to throw it in. Um, I'm going to create a very slight border around this content to bring it forward a little bit more because both are warm colors and warm colors tend to come forward. I'm going to put a box shadow on this, which is going to create a little shadow effect and it's going to help to bring this middle part forward. So we'll come into the wrapper and we're going to add a box shadow and we're going to use one of the grays for this. So uh, zero degrees, zero percent for the saturation and we'll go with the 30 percent. So the darkest of those and then for the positioning, zero, uh, zero pixels displacement left and right and up and down but We'll use four pixels for the blur, so it is peeking out from behind there. There we go. So there's just this slight little shadow coming out both sides to bring the content forward a little bit. Okay, so there's our wrapper. We've got the body. The color for the wrapper is going to be behind the content. So this orange color right here, we've got the background for the wrapper, uh, the header, we could put a background color in behind the image as well. I'm just going to skip over that for the moment. Uh, main is going to get the wrapper color. Let's go down to the footer. We'll add a, a color in behind the footer here. So background color for the footer. And we'll do our 34 degrees. This is the orange one. And I think 37, 34. Uh, yeah, 37 right here. So it's the darkest version of those. And then for the text for the footer, what we're going to want to do in here is we're going to go to the lightest version of this. Because we're making the background dark, we want to make the text light. And this is going to be something that you do um, Oh, sorry, there should be a color, not background color. This is something that you want to do to make sure that you're maintaining accessibility. And with a color scheme, that's one of the most important things that you can do is make sure that you are maintaining accessibility. There we go. You want to be able to read the text on the background. If you have a background color and a text color that are too close together, it's going to make it very hard to read. 
you're not going to pass accessibility standards and that can lead you into trouble later on. Okay, so we've got our background colors now for the HTML, for the main content, for the footer. We've got light on dark. Now, I was, uh, as I was saying before, we don't want to put black as text. Now we've got black text here, here, here. Um, we'll come back to the nav menu in a minute. But I want to get rid of the pure black that we've got inside of there. So I'm going to change this from pure black to the darkest of my grays. It's going to be a subtle change, but it's going to be something that will help us. So inside the columns, the paragraphs, color HSL, zero degrees, zero percent, and then the darkest is the 30 percent. There. So we still have good contrast with the background, but it's not that really, really strong black. Whenever you've got body content, large amounts of text, you don't want to have pure black. It just, it's too strong. We want to be subtle with a lot of things that we're doing with color. Now the heading up here, this text, let's go for the red. Bring out the raspberries in this color right here. So we'll go with the uh, color for the H1 in here going into our red colors and let's go for the darkest of those so we'll take that one and we'll use that for the H1 color okay we'll take a look yeah that works now one thing you have to be careful about whenever you're putting text over top of an image you want to make sure that there's enough contrast and I do have a little bit of the red you can see it much more clearly here now now that I've got the red in the text, it's bringing out this red. So I'm going to put a text shadow on here. And the text shadow that I'm going to use is going to be just the lightest version of this same hue. So we'll come in here, text shadow, we'll do 2px, 2px, 2px. That's the left, right, up, down. So it's shifted to the right, it's shifted down, it's blurred by two pixels, and then the color is going to be our 346 degrees, our 60% saturation, and then 84% I think was the lightest. Let's go up and double check that. Uh, for the red, 84, yes, that's the one. There we go. So we have the dark red, the dark raspberry color for the text and then a light version of that for the shadow and you can see it's just a subtle little hint but it makes the text pop out and it's a little bit easier to read now we can do the same thing on the text down here so with these headings the h2s we'll find those down here here we go and i want to do the same thing i'm going to have a color and i'm going to have a text shadow doing the same sort of thing now the uh, color for the H2s, where are we here, there we go. Now I'm gonna go close to this, but I don't want to have the exact same thing as the top one. I want the top one to be the strongest. I don't wanna use the exact same color for both these. I'm gonna go slightly lighter. So I'm gonna go for the, mi the middle version of the shadow for this one. So instead of the 34, we're going to go for the 59. There we go. So this is going to become the 59. All right. And we want to put shadow on here. So again, we're going to be subtle with the shadows. We don't want to go the uh, same way. So we'll use the, the 84 version with that. So let's try it with these same values. Two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, HSL. 346, 60%, and not the 59, but the late one here, 84. Okay, there we are. Very subtle effect, but it just does help to make those headings pop out a little bit. 
All right, now all we've got left is this nav list. Uh, with the nav list, we want to do something that uh, has a good hover effect as well. So when it's in a, in a browser, you're using a mouse or whatever, you do get the hover effect. Like right now, I'm just doing the underline overline, but I want to use colors that are going to fit that match the rest of the page. They're part of our scheme. We want the links to have the same look and feel as the rest of our site. We don't want this blue, this default blue, although that signifies a link, it just, it feels out of place in this website. So let's come in here and we'll set a background for the main nav. We're gonna go with the red and let's try the, the medium color for the background here for the main nav. All right, so let's try that. Okay, yeah, that works. We can do that. So we've got that and then the links themselves Well, let's do something like we did down here. Let's use the the lightest of the grays. So white on red, you're going to have really good contrast with that. So our off white and the off red for the background. So nav link color HSO zero degrees. And you can write it with or without the DEG. It's going to work zero percent. And then for the lightest one, we want to say 90%. Okay, great. So that color good contrast, which again is one of the most important things that we can do. Then for the hover effect, what I want to do is I'm going to take this light and I'm going to make that the background for the whole anchor section. So in the hover, this is going to become my background color. And then we need something new for the color. Um, we could bring in the same as we used right here for the background of the main nav. We could do that, or we can change that slightly. Let's take a look and see what that is like. Yeah, that works. So just having it sort of flip the color, that works. Feels like it belongs. And there we have it. There is a color scheme. So we extracted two colors from the image that gave us the the theme, the feeling for the website. And then those two colors, we created three variations of those. We grabbed five grays based on the same values that we're using relatively for um, the font weights, 100, 300, 500, 700, 900. That's the lighter, light, normal, bold, and bolder. So taking those, turning those into gray values, using those on the page, there's the whole thing. There's our website with colors that look like they belong. The image feels like it belongs. The colors feel like they belong. We're not using any pure white or pure black. It looks like everything has been styled. All right. Hope that helps you out. Hope that helps you get started. Um, again, the color of this tool that I used right here, Color Pick Eyedropper. I'll put a uh, link to the uh, Chrome Store uh, extension for you inside the description. I'll also put a copy of the finished CSS and the finished HTML as code gist links in the description for you. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.